It's no secret that China is the epicenter of numerous humanitarian crisis events. I don't say this to implicate or condemn the Chinese people, not in any capacity whatsoever, but the authoritarian Chinese government is without question one of the most powerful and intentionally dangerous governmental structures ever to exist on planet Earth. The list of issues is quite long, from forced organ donation to labor camps and child exploitation. But today I want to make a connection between gaming and one of these horrific human rights violations because there is an intrinsic scale of balance looming behind the gaming industry itself, which weighs morality versus cost and many players, without ever even knowing, participate in this exchange. Because of China's immense manufacturing infrastructure and their global economic dominance, few countries can or ever even do take any action against them on the basis of human rights. Many of the world's largest organizations and countries find their own economies intertwined with China, whether they like it or not, as a natural product of industrial expansion. However, the closer these relationships get, the more impactful it is to understand that many of the products we know and love are made at the direct expense of human life and experience. Gaming in particular suffers from this problem. To understand why and how, we need to look at three of the world's biggest gaming hardware companies. Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo are massive in the space. Console gaming is almost completely dominated by the combination of these three giants. Microsoft has the Xbox as well as a foothold in PC gaming on top of that, Nintendo has the Switch, and Sony has the PlayStation franchise. These companies on their own are not responsible for gross human rights grievances or violations. However, the vast majority of their hardware manufacturing needs are fulfilled in China. A combination of two Chinese-based multinational manufacturing companies are responsible for the hardware that Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo ship to consumers. The larger company that is used most heavily by all three of these gaming giants is Foxconn. And Microsoft also utilizes the services of Flex, a similar manufacturing and assembly company, for certain Xbox console components. Foxconn and Flex have operational factories in mainland China, as is true with most electronics manufacturing giants, and this is one of the main reasons why consumer price can be driven down. Manufacturing these consoles through much smaller companies that cannot operate at the same scale in order to increase efficiency would exponentially increase the price. However, that is not the only factor. Recently, on March 1st of this year, 2020 to be exact, a study was published by the Australian Strategic Policy Institute which outlines how 80,000 Uyghurs were relocated throughout mainland China and forced to work in various factories, factories that heavily included those of Foxconn. This initiative was labeled as re-education, but the reality is it was and is slave labor that is being used to cheaply produce and assemble electronic components which are then sold and shipped to consumers around the world by the likes of Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. This is not a new phenomenon by any stretch. The issues with slave labor being used in China to produce wholesale electronics at a massive profit can be traced backwards through the years in the footprint of Apple through their cyclical iPhones. The argument is often made that particularly Americans will care about human rights right up until it costs them their smartphone, at which point the conversation shifts and becomes one of denial or distancing rather than frustration and activism. There is a very easy correlation to draw between ethics and price. Throughout human history, it can be demonstrated that costs decrease and profit margins increase when human rights are trampled upon. It can be seen with tobacco in the American colonies hundreds of years ago, and it can be seen now with the cost of electronics in China produced by imprisoned Uyghurs who are undergoing forced re-education. All of this requires the question, how much would console gaming truly cost without this forced labor? How much would end user prices increase with fair labor and manufacturing that did not rely upon the exploitative behavior of the Chinese government? Next generation consoles from Sony and Microsoft, which are the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, are already predicted to launch at about a $100 price point increase over their previous counterparts. That is not set in stone and could easily change or be incorrect. I'm not really sure at this time unless more concrete details have emerged, which I'm currently unaware of. But the question remains, what would that price be without forced labor? And how high is too high for consumers even when they have been made aware of the underlying issues? These violations feel like they are a world away, because they are a world away. It's difficult for many people, myself included, to really grasp what is happening when the only way we've even become aware is a PDF study from a research institute across the planet. The idea of gaming hardware costs going up is unappealing, but the alternative is honestly unconscionable. Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft are not the only companies to benefit from this either. Dell, Samsung, BMW, Jaguar, HP, Apple, all of them directly benefit from the labor exchange re-education programs, and all of them are entrenched in modern consumer life to a nearly inextricable degree. 
It's a horrible thought and a horrible reality, but the worst part comes when asking ourselves, what can we do? The answer from a consumer perspective is basically nothing. I don't say this to be a defeatist, but the sheer scope of China's manufacturing dominance means that almost any product you use, any at all, especially automobile or electronic goods, at some point or another had roots in China. Short of rejecting modern society completely, you cannot escape tangential support of these human rights violations. And it's not an appealing thought, but it is the reality we live in. To further exacerbate this horrible cycle, free market competition has almost turned this forced labor and financial benefits it provides into a requirement. For Sony or Microsoft to make a change, as direct competitors, for instance, it would necessitate a joint agreement for them to both do so simultaneously. If such an agreement did not exist and one company continued to utilize Foxconn manufacturing, it would create an ability for them to severely undercut on price. And typically with whatever console generation, the one that has a cheaper price tag comes out on top. That's honestly how it usually goes. And they could grab a much larger market share because of this. It's hard to say how much these companies actually know about the demographic makeup of their partner's workforce, but it's fairly clear that forced labor is an out of sight, out of mind scenario right now. I am not proposing that gamers take a stand against this reality because dropping any sort of moral pretense or Fox outrage here, that simply would not even work. Short of dropping the activity completely due to the spider web of companies implicated, no matter how you play, it's highly likely you will be touching hardware that in some way either came from or could have come from a hub that utilized the forced labor transfer initiatives. An interesting story that relates quite well here is the saga of Andy George. Andy George undertook the one-man initiative of making and eating a BLT, bacon, lettuce, and tomato, and did so himself with as little outside influence or help as possible. This might seem like a small thing, but it's really not. First, he has to grow the grain, refine it to bake bread. He has to raise the livestock, slaughter the livestock, and farm the various other components. He had to make cheese by hand and a whole host of other tasks. By the end of this six month process, Andy had made a sandwich, complete with everything we picture in our minds when thinking of a BLT. And that sandwich had cost him $1,500 to produce. A $1,500 sandwich sounds absurd, but the reality is the amount of time, work, and resources to make these products, whether it be food or electronics, is monumental. A $1,500 sandwich is not even close to the store price we see around us, it is infinitely higher, because all along that supply chain, there are efficiencies and exploitations to cut down on the price. Mass production is one of those steps. Cheaper labor is yet another. Substitution of costly ingredients is rampant in the budget food industry because it further decreases the actual cost of these highly complicated meals. We don't think of them as highly complicated, we really don't, but from start to finish, all things included, they actually are. The same is true of gaming hardware. From start to finish, the actual cost of a console's production, if we were to assume fair labor, safe working conditions, and a host of other morally appealing factors, would be far higher than it is right now. But at what point will consumers recognize the ethical quagmire and still choose to ignore it? Online outrage is a very interesting creature. I am only now learning of my own susceptibility to it with greater precision in recent months and years. When Blizzard stifled free speech recently, the internet erupted in an explosion of protest. I am in no way saying that this was undeserved or unwarranted, but it's interesting to note that the actual ramifications to this and the effort required to participate were almost totally negligible. One simply had to condemn Blizzard's actions and maybe delete their Battle.net account. Plenty of people did more than that, yes, but the vast majority participated with vocal callouts and nothing more. I include myself in that category, by the way. I made a couple of videos, deleted my Battle.net account, and stopped subscribing to World of Warcraft, but that's really it. However, a larger issue, such as the humanitarian crisis in China when it comes to Uyghur camps, religious persecution, and forced labor, is much harder to actually act upon. Short of just ending my entire gaming career outright as of this very moment, I cannot actually do anything about it. There is no surface level movement to attach oneself to because practically whatever you buy directly or indirectly supports the established framework. And this forces a very uncomfortable level of self-reflection. Knowing that I am supporting an industry with at best questionable manufacturing origins and at worst literal slave labor, what is the adequate response here? The horrible, uncomfortable, and often ignored trade-off in gaming is entertainment at the unknowable moral or ethical cost of slave labor. It's entirely possible the individual console on my desk was made in one of the factories which utilized actual paid labor. It was probably dirt cheap and not even close to fair compensation, quote unquote, but it could be ethical in the sense of opt-in employment. That's a reality. However, there is a very real chance the console sitting next to me on my desk right now, or the next generation hardware I order in the future, will have been made by a prisoner who has committed no crime, save their belief in a certain religion, who is now forced to execute slave labor by a corrupt communist government. 
Morality versus cost is a horrible concept, but the brutal truth is that it's now so ingrained in our day-to-day -day lives, it is unavoidable. Gaming is just one area where it can be seen particularly clearly, owing to the concentration of industry giants utilizing one central electronics hub by the name of Foxconn. But the question of value and cost versus moral or ethical integrity is much, much broader and harder to ask. It's not an easy topic or a topic with an easy solution. The answer is not as simple as boycott this one company and make a difference. The answer is infinitely complicated and more akin to boycott your entire known life because global supply chains are interconnected webs of moral and ethical exchange, where the idealistic rules of fairness or justice have long since been abandoned. But that's it. The trade-off is very real, cost versus morality. And despite it being an extremely dark topic, I felt like discussing my thoughts. There are links down below, merch, Patreon, Twitter, other social media, another YouTuber as well. Please support him, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.